The government, late in 2020, announced that the UK will end the sale of new petrol and diesel cars and vans by 2030, 10 years earlier than planned. This has heralded the dawn of a new era in transportation. For cars and vans, this is focused firmly on the transition to electric drivetrains, not only delivering zero tailpipe emissions, improving air quality and protecting the climate, but just simply a better way of driving and delivering your goods and services. Maxis have embraced this challenge and are committed to bringing new, fit-for-purpose, wholly electric vans to market. Also, they have recognised that this is a transitional journey so that there remain some challenges that need to be met in more traditional ways. Whatever you need to get your goods or services from A to B, there will be something in the Maxus range for you. My name is Paul Kirby and Maxus have asked me to talk with you about their new range of vans. With my first job in life being a van driver, I have since been messing around in vans for nearly 30 years. Not to mention vlogging my views and opinions with my selfie stick. Now as head of electric vehicles for Vanarama, I'm always looking to help people move to this new electric way of getting the job done. I drove my first electric van back in 2004 and I'm happy to say that they have come a long way since then. Maxxis have embraced this change and have brought out the first ground-up electric van in the eDeliver 3 and also the eDeliver 9 with an 88 kilowatt hour battery, the largest battery currently available in a van. Let's have a look at them and see if they could be fit for a purpose in your business. So in this video I'm going to focus on the eDeliver 3. Now I have to confess to being a tiny bit excited when this vehicle first arrived as it is the very first ground up electric only vehicle to hit the UK. Well, what does that mean? Well simply it means it has never had a traditional ICE internal combustion engine under the bonnet and it has motors for engines and a battery for the fuel tank. Well, does that mean that it's all space age and science fiction? Won't you have to make lots of compromises to go electric? Well, they're good questions, because unless it does a job as a van, what use is it to you? It has to be fit for purpose. There are definitely some changes you will be making. You will be relaxing more as you drive, filling with fuel in your sleep, visiting the garage less, and helping the environment and air quality improve. But it's a van first and foremost. So let's consider seven key facts. How far will it go? How fast will you charge? How practical is it? What is the spec and comfort levels? What cables does it come with? How much does it cost and how quickly can you get one? Now, of course, I could start with range and charging, but what's the point if this is not a van that does a job for you? So let's start with the practicalities, where it matters at the back. Before we get into the back, I want to point out a couple of things that Maxxis have added to make our lives a little bit easier. Reversing sensors and better still, a rear view camera that helps us in those tricky environments that we sometimes work in. Protecting your assets from those annoying bumps which cost you time and money. Anyway, let's get inside and see how practical it is. So as you can see, it's a nice square space enough room between the wheel arches for the all-important pallet and two of which will fit inside this van. In the terms of the overall space you will get 4.8 cube meters and the rest of the dimensions we'll put in a graphic for you. There's also a chassis cab available allowing you to create very bespoke vehicles to your exact needs. This van has 865 kilos payload on the smaller 35 kilowatt battery and 905 on the larger 52 kilowatt. It's also worth knowing that this vehicle can tow 1200 kilos with a brake trailer. A couple of final things for your security are the lashing points and you get ply lining with this van as standard too, which means that you'll not get those nasty dents coming out of the side of your van. So all in all, a very practical space. A sliding side load door giving easy access to your curbside deliveries finishes off nicely the practicalities of this van. No compromises so far, right? Okay, so let's talk electric. How far will it go and how fast can you charge? 
Well, there's a choice of ranges, 99 miles for the 35 kilowatt battery and 151 miles for the bigger 52 kilowatt battery. These ranges are measured by WLTP tests and these are lab tests, so it's really worth knowing what affects the range. And there are four key factors. The driver, driver behavior is a major factor. The temperature, when it's cold outside, the batteries are less efficient. Where you're driving, city or motorway or a mix of both. Interestingly, this is the reverse of an ice vehicle where in the city driving, ice can be very uneconomical, electric, not so much. Finally, payload. It's important to know that the figures were calculated with 77% payload on board, so payload shouldn't affect you very much, but could. Bottom line is, for the majority of us, there are more than enough range in the batteries to cover our daily journeys. And what if there's not? Well, let's consider how quick the vehicles charge. First of all, there's the ability to rapid charge standard with the vehicle. This means that when you're running low on charge, you can access one of the many public charging points which will deliver 20 to 80% charge in around 45 minutes, usually called DC or rapid charging. Typically though, on a day-to-day -day basis, you will get your charge using AC charging, which charges at seven kilowatts an hour. This means that it will take a little over seven hours to charge your 52.5 kilowatt hour battery and around five hours to charge a 35 kilowatt hour battery. And if you want more detail on charging and how it works and where you can do this, I can cover this off in another video. So, I don't know about you, but I'm still finding it hard to spot the compromises. I know some of you might do more than 150 miles in a day, but giving your drivers a break while they charge for 40 minutes will boost your daily mileage capabilities well over 200 miles. And do you want to give your drivers a break? Of course you do. Well, whilst we're talking about the drivers, let's have a think about how the cabin area and the specifications are. Driving an electric vehicle is a much more enjoyable experience. Why is that important? Well, research has found out that men under 50 are significantly more at risk of poor mental health than any other group. And let's face it, this is the majority of our van driver population. So then it's good to be able to offer something better as an environment for them. Whenever I look at a van, the first thing I want to see is does it have air conditioning? I've been banging on about this for years and it doesn't feel fair that all the cars out there have air conditioning and vans have not had it. Equal rights for vans and van drivers, that's what I say. Well, the great news is that this is standard on the eDeliver 3, so your drivers will be in relative comfort for those few days that we really need air conditioning. On top of all that, electric vehicles are automatic, making them far less stressful to drive. They deliver all of their power from the moment you put your foot on the accelerator. So no ending up in the middle of a roundabout in the wrong gear, struggling to pull away with all the traffic descending on you. Cruise control and other controls are all at your fingertips for the radio and that sort of thing are here, nice and easy. There's also a nice touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, a comfy seat, heated mind you, with the all important armrest, coupled with the steering wheel adjustment. Finish off this driver focused environment nicely. I truly believe an early evidence would suggest that you are less likely to be involved in an accident in an electric vehicle as it is less stressful and simply easier to drive. So what's the driving experience like in the Maxxis e Deliver 3? Well, driving simplicity at its best. Electric vehicle driving just makes all the difference that you could ever need it to. It is lovely, simple, smooth, Pulling away at a T-junction, easy as you like. Doesn't matter the traffic around you, you've got a really smooth pull away. No matter what weight you've got in the back, all the power is delivered the minute you put your foot on the accelerator pedal. The experience is much more peaceful than driving a traditional van with a big revy engine. So just lifting your foot off the accelerator allows the vehicle to brake and that puts power back into the batteries. That's all adjustable so that you can get exactly the feel that you want, but it really does make a difference, especially around the city, to uh, how much, how, how far you can go. 
people say they'd never go back to driving a diesel or a petrol it's easy to see why behind the wheel of an electric van let me tell you so one of the other questions i always get is how many cables do i get with the vehicle so max has supplied both types of cable this one a type 2 cable allows you to plug your vehicle into your home or workplace charge points and you also get the standard three pin plug version which allows you to plug yourself into well anywhere you can find a plug really don't forget though this kind is called slow for a reason you will just get two kilowatts per hour and it could take up to 25 hours to charge this battery but it will get you out of jail free and it comes in handy so if charging seems complicated let me just show you how so with the maxis e deliver 3 you've got the charging point at the front of the vehicle and for AC charging and this is your home charging at your wall box or even if you have the three pin plug which is supplied by Maxus then it's just a question of plugging the charging cable into the front of the vehicle and then you take the other end of the charge point cable and plug that into your wall box or workplace charging point that means that then you get the seven kilowatts an hour that we spoke about. So how much is it gonna be, I hear you cry? <laughs> well, I lied. I'm not gonna tell you how much. You should speak to your dealer or lease company about that sort of thing. But I will say that pound for mile, this is a very cost-effective vehicle. Be sure to evaluate the total cost of running the Maxus, not just the price or the lease rate, but the cost of fuel, maintenance, and not forgetting downtime. Fuel savings can be as much as 70% against the equivalent diesel. That could be hundreds of pounds of months. The maintenance will cost you less and large companies that have been doing this for years report up to 60% less. Finally, less downtime, less to go wrong and less accidents. That means that you are more efficient and can therefore make more money. So whichever way you go, don't forget to calculate the whole cost. So after all of that, when can you have one? End of 2021 okay for you? Of course not. You want to get started, right? You will benefit, your drivers will benefit, the environment will benefit, and your local air quality will benefit. Why would you want to wait? Well, you don't have to. There are vehicles available with short lead times. But don't waste time. There is a lot of interest.